Hey guys, this is Ted Wright here from Epic Archaeology, and um, I am here with my good friend, Dr. Marcus Ross. Um, we, he and I have been knowing each other for several years. I actually met him uh, first uh, speaking at a conference in North Carolina, and uh, he is here in the Chicago area, and so I uh, corralled him to uh, ask him a couple of questions. He's a paleontologist and a geologist, and um, he is, we're speaking tonight on dinosaurs, and so Dr. Ross, thank you for coming on Epic Archaeology. And I want to ask you a question uh, about uh, birds. We're often told that birds uh, are actually our, our evolutionary ancestors of dinosaurs and that some dinosaurs actually may have feathers. Um, can you sort of yeah. set the record straight on, on that issue for birds and dinosaurs? Are they related and, and do dinosaurs actually have feathers? Ah, okay. Those are, those are great questions and really... <laughs> They've been ones that have been flying around here for a little while, so to speak, right? <laughs> yeah. So a lot of evolutionists will tell you that um, a bird is a dinosaur, mm -hmm. right? And you know, the chickens in your backyard, they're dinosaurs, they'll say. And you kind of look at it and say, oh boy, this is the worst form of devolution I've ever seen if we go from T-Rex to a chicken. Yeah. <laughs> but the question is really one about what we in science call taxonomy. And taxonomy is the study of organizing and grouping animals. So in order to ask or at least answer the question, do dinosaurs have feathers? We have to know what is a dinosaur, yeah, what is a feather, mm -hmm. and then what do the fossils tell us about dinosaurs and feathers? So dinosaurs are particular types of animals, and if you were a little kid and you got that bago prehistoric life, there were things <laughs> that were dinosaurs and there were things that weren't in there. Yeah. You know, the saber-toothed tigers and the, and the woolly mammoths are e pretty easy. Those are mammals. You know, but it turns out the pterodactyl that was in there, mm -hmm. actually we call them pterosaurs, but you know, those things that were in there, those aren't dinosaurs. They're a little bit different anatomically than dinosaurs. And the big sailback four-legged dimetrodon that was usually in there, that's, that's not a dinosaur either. Dinosaurs are categorized by having certain physical features, uh, things like a little bump on the humerus that connects mm -hmm. some of the muscles over here, yeah. um, or some features of the, of the hips or uh, an ankle bone that wraps up over the front of the shin bone at the bottom of the foot. Yeah. And if you find an animal that checks off these and other kinds of boxes, you've got a dinosaur. And usually when you think of those, we're thinking of, you know, tyrannosaurids and mm -hmm. we're thinking of the horned dinosaurs like triceratops or the long neck sauropods and duck billed dinosaurs. Yeah. A lot of different sorts of dinosaurs and they all have those characteristics. And birds have some of those characteristics too. Hmm. And because my evolutionary colleagues think that birds evolved out of a dinosaurian stock, that's why they call them dinosaurs. It's because it, it's kind of like a Russian nesting doll, like the birds came yeah. out of this one, so you can call it this thing. Right. Well, that's one way of, of looking at the data, and I understand that, and I think actually there's a little bit of truth there. Mm -hmm. and, uh, birds do share more anatomical similarities with dinosaurs than they share with anything else. Mm. In the same way that you and I are both mammals, sure. and we share a lot of similarities with mice and with uh, dolphins more similarities in our anatomy than we do with snakes or you know toads sure so birds in the same way are you can kind of call them dinosaurs in that dinosaur could be this giant category that has a lot of different stuff in it like the word mammal has a whole lot of different stuff in it sure. and as a creationist I know that there are lots of different kinds of mammals Yes. The, the mice and us and the elephant, and they're not the same. Whales are mammals, right? Whales so, are mammals, yeah. No fur. No fur, and <laughs> yeah, very different sorts of creatures. They live out in the ocean, they've got flippers versus everything else that you know pretty much has hands and feet and things like that. Well, dinosaur is a category that includes lots of things in it, and sure. we might even put birds in there. Mm -hmm. So dinosaurs, you've got to have certain physical characteristics. Um, what are feathers? Well, we, we kind of all know what a feather looks like. And we think about one on a blue jay, you know, those are always, as a kid, I always like catching the blue jay feather. It's like, wow, this is awesome. <laughs> it's got a little vein. It's got all these fibers that are coming off of them, but that's only one type of feather. Yeah. And those are what we call the, the veined feathers or the uh, pinaceous feathers that they look like a pen, right? And that's how they were used. And there's other types of feathers as well. There's the down feathers that we use in comforters and pillows. Mm -hmm. Those have a little nub at the bottom and then they just fray out like crazy. Sure, yeah. And they're used for insulation to keep birds warm. But then there's a, another type of feather that modern birds have and they're just these straight little mm -hmm. hair-like feathers. We call them bristles or uh, rictal feathers. And you'll see them around the eyes of birds. If you ever take a, a look at a picture of an ostrich online, it's not usually the yeah. thing you do, yeah. but go ahead, take a look. Just Google a picture of an ostrich face and you're going to see like these almost eyelashes. And those are actually 
feathers. Also, they're not hair. They're made of a slightly different combination of uh, proteins. They're made of keratin, mm -hmm. and our hair and, and our fingernails are made of keratin. Sure. But they're made of two types of keratin, and mm -hmm. feathers are only made of one. Ah. Now that comes into play when we start asking the question, okay, if we know what a dinosaur is, it's an animal that has these anatomical features, and we can look for things in the raptor dinosaurs or duckbills or things like that. Do we see any evidence in the fossil record that they have pinaceous feathers or downy fluff or rictal feathers or any of these other sorts of things? And there's about five different uh, feather types in the fossil record, maybe eight, some questions there, but at least five different types of fossil feathers have been found in association either with known birds mm -hmm. or with possible dinosaurs that oh. have uh, feathery stuff. Most of the time that you see feathers in the fossil record, they look like lots of just little fibers. They mm -hmm. look kind of like hair. But on a number of specimens, they've been able to identify the proteins in them, and it's only the beta keratin, like only beta keratin is found in feathers. Mm. Two types of keratin in our fingers and in our hair, but only one type in feathers, and these things found alongside the dinosaurs are only the one type. So looking across anatomy, feathers are the only thing that do that. Yeah. And so that's a good example of what we might see. Now, what sort of dinosaurs do we see these on? Um, well, the raptor dinosaurs that we're familiar with with Jurassic World and Jurassic Park, <laughs> and I love the movies, they're Great. awesome. The storylines are sometimes a little lacking, but anyway, the dinosaurs are awesome. They're awesome. Whenever you have dinosaurs chasing and eating people, it's a, it's a great movie. Get the popcorn. Get it. Just, just get it. pretend yeah. you're in the 1950s, it doesn't exactly. matter, it's great. Exactly. So we find raptor dinosaurs with feathers on them, things like Microraptor, fully covered with pinaceous feathers, the, the vein yes. type for, and it looks like it was even able to glide. And this is a little raptor about the size of, you know, like a raven yeah. or so. So we find these in fossils? Yeah, fossils. Microraptor comes from China. Many of the feathered dinosaurs come from China. And how do we know their uh, feathers in the fossil? Mm -hmm. They're pretty clear, right? They actually are. Uh, if you get a chance to, to look up some images, look at Microraptor. Uh, that's M-I-C-R-O-R-A-P-T-O-R, Microraptor. And uh, you'll see some really great photographs. And some of them are very high resolution. You can zoom in on them. And when the first feathered Microraptor was discovered and published in 2003, that's what changed my mind. I was pretty skeptical about the whole dinosaurs and feather thing yeah. in the late 1990s and early 2000s. There wasn't that much data. There wasn't that much evidence. But when I saw a Microraptor, which anatomically looked like a Velociraptor and a Deinonychus, all yeah. those, you know, it's got a little sickle claw, it's got a dinosaur face. Yeah. Uh, it's got claws and you know fingers and, and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. And it's got a long bony tail, just like the raptors mm -hmm. do. And yet, head to toe, this thing was covered in feathers. Mm -hmm. Some of the preservation is so good that uh, paleontologists have been able to identify little color bodies that are wow. embedded in the feathers. And different shapes of those bodies are associated with different colors of feather. So there's wow. rod-shaped and sphere-shaped ones. And some of them are for like your blue, black, green, those nice iridescent oh, yeah, feathers. Yeah. And others are for more of the red, brown coloration. Interesting. Microraptor was completely covered in black feathers. So like Actually, a raven-ish. Yeah, it really yeah. would have looked like a, a yeah. demon raven. <laughs> <laughs> a demon With nasty raven. little teeth on it, and you're like, what is wrong with that <laughs> thing? That was one that really, it changed my mind. Yeah. And it's not a bird. It doesn't have enough physical characters and features that you would say sure. bird in the normal way that we do. It doesn't have a beak. It's uh, not a fully flighted type of animal. It's got this long rigid tail yeah. that's like a, a little balancing rod on the back of it. And a few other things that you look at it and say, yeah, this is this is very dinosaur. Yeah. Let me ask you about Archaeopteryx. Mm. Uh, you hear a lot about, you know, you guys may have heard of Archaeopteryx. And so... It's one of the most famous fossils exactly. ever. Exactly. So, question, Dr. Ross, bird or dinosaur, or both, or a little bit of what, what do you think? What's yeah. your thoughts? Well, to answer that question, we first kind of have to ask, what is a bird? Yeah. And what is a dinosaur? And we've already talked about what a dinosaur is. But one of the things that I try to think about is that our idea of a bird and our idea of a dinosaur are just that. Mm -hmm. They're ideas. Right? They're terms that we use and apply to other things that are actually the real organisms. Yeah. Uh, in Genesis 1, God talks about making the beasts of the field, right? the beasts mm -hmm. of the earth, mm -hmm. uh, of making the flying things. The Hebrew there is oaf, which mm -hmm. is, it, it covers a lot of stuff that might fly. Anything that flies? Just about. Possibly, yeah. yeah. And even some things that don't. So oh, the wow. ostrich in Leviticus yeah. is noted as an oaf, even though it doesn't fly. Ah, But it's a birdie thing, but yeah. bats are also oaf, right? Yeah. Because they fly. So... The Bible uses, in Genesis, these big, broad categories just to say there's lots of different stuff out there. Mm -hmm. 
bird is not a biblical kind. Interesting. Right? I mean, there is no bird kind. That's sort of shocking to hear because when you read, you know, most people kind of think that, that flying things are just the birds. But what you're saying is that includes a broad category of things. That, exactly. That fly like like bats, butterflies, other things, yeah. uh, whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, go ahead. So, the, yeah. It, and so if bird is a category that we use in English to describe a whole bunch of things, and we know biblically that there's more than one bird kind. Sure. The ostrich and the cardinal are not penguins. part of this. Yeah, penguins, <laughs> totally different kind of their own. So what animals count as birds? What animals count as dinosaurs? And are those two terms mutually exclusive? Well, that's actually a question of taxonomy, hmm. not one of biblical Interesting. issues. It's yeah. not a, a question of if I say this dinosaur flies or has feathers, I'm saying it's a bird? Well, I don't know. What do you mean by bird? Yeah. And that's a question more for science than anything else. Mm -hmm. There are other dinosaurs that have feathers on them as well. Some of them were able to glide like Microraptor was. Others don't. There is a, an animal that's kind of a cousin to T-Rex called Eutyrannus. Interesting. And it is covered in fuzz. Huh. Which is really pretty interesting because we have some T-Rex skeletons with skin impressions on them. T-Rex doesn't have fuzz from what we've seen. But it's, you know, second cousin once removed does. <laughs> And one of the things that's neat about that is the second cousin once removed is a much smaller animal, and T-Rex is a very big animal. Yes. And if you think about how mammals have hair, right? That's a defining sure. features of mammal. You know, you and I are mammals. We, I've got mm -hmm. some left over here, but it's not, <laughs> not doing as well as you. <laughs> mammals have hair, except when they don't. Mm. You know, you mentioned whales. Yes. Whales basically don't have any hair. It's true. And elephants don't have any hair. No. And when we think about the very large mammals that live on, on the land, the elephants, the rhinos, and the hippos, three biggest land mammals, and none of them have any hair. None of hair. And the reason for that is they're trying to control their body temperature. They're sure. warm-blooded animals. Sure. And when you get to a certain size, hair is a problem. It keeps in too much heat. That's why elephants have big ears. They're using them for radiators. Sure, sure. And they have no hair on their body because the African elephant is living in a warm place, trying to cool down yeah. all the time. So T-Rex is a giant animal. It walks around on two legs, mm -hmm. and you probably need to be warm-blooded to do that. Sure. Paleontologists have run some experiments and some studies on how much muscle mass you need and then what kind of metabolism you need to feed those muscles to be able to walk yeah. like T-Rex does. You pretty much have to be a warm-blooded organism. Hmm. So T-Rex, warm-blooded and hair, uh, featherless, but its smaller cousin is probably warm-blooded and feathered. Yeah. Needs the feathers. So yeah. what, are, what would be some of the functions of the feathers on a dinosaur? You yeah. mentioned warmth, uh, and then flight, uh, perhaps maybe even uh, mating or things like that. Yeah, there's all sorts of ways that modern birds use their feathers. They use them for species identification. Mm -hmm. right? uh, we, we recognize, for example, in where I live, there's two species of chickadee. There's the black cat chickadee and there's the Carolina chickadee. Mm -hmm. And there are very slight differences in their, in their feather color patterns. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I can't even tell the difference between the two of them. Yeah. There's a slight difference in their song. I can't tell the difference of that. But I have an ornithologist friend who tells me this is definitely possible. <laughs> and uh, you can tell a cardinal from a blue jay, from a bluebird, from a wren. Sure. Largely because of size, beak shape, and color pattern on the feathers. So in the same way that mammals use their hair not only for insulation and for warmth, mm -hmm. but they also use it for species identification. Think of all those different cats that are out there that have stripes or spots or none or a color pattern. And you kind of go, oh, I know what a mountain lion looks like because it doesn't look like a leopard. Yeah. So dinosaurs, no doubt, for the ones that had feathers, and that might actually be quite a few of them, are going to be using them for insulation. Mm -hmm. because down feathers are phenomenal. They're better than yeah. hair yeah. for insulation. They're really good. They're going to be using them for species identification um, and possibly display. You mentioned you know, um, display when animals are strutting their stuff, as the guys usually do. You know, birds have these elaborate, some of the birds have really elaborate stuff. You watch those Birds of Paradise yes, videos, and you're like, you know, whoa, what's, wow. I mean, has, right. really, has anything really changed, though? Even with, you know, with guys? No, no. It's so all look at us, you know, ladies, it's, you know. We, we try, and then once you're back, it's like, don't look at us again. All right, exactly. we're, 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 we'll be fine. But, yeah, you know, mammal, uh, mammal males do all sorts of displays. Mm -hmm. Even in the invertebrate world, 
animals typically do display and things like that. And they use what they look like in order to try and attract mates. So mm -hmm. I expect the dinosaurs were probably doing some of the same things for the ones that had feathers on them. And for the ones that didn't, they probably had skin patterns and colors and, mm -hmm. and whatnot to do that as yeah. well. You know, we, not everything that gets big ends up looking like an elephant. It's not all gray, yeah. it's not all green. Dinosaurs were dynamic creatures that were probably wildly colorful. Mm. Um, we know that Microraptor looked like a raven. We also know that some other animals from skin impressions uh, and the distribution of these color bodies in the skin were looking kind of like deer with a, a brown mm. top and a white underneath. And you're like, really? Wow. Yeah. I mean, the, the sort of That's things cool. that paleontologists are able to discover now yeah. is just mind blowing. That's awesome. And it, I think it's encouraging. It's, it's showing us that one, science isn't done, right? We haven't, we haven't found it all. In fact, there's wildly more stuff out there to get. Mm -hmm. And so if you're interested in archeology, span if you're interested yep. in paleontology, if you're interested in any area of science, there's a lot more Absolutely. to go out and find because God made a world that's more complicated than our minds. Absolutely. It comes from his. Yeah. But we have a mandate. We have a dominion mandate to rule the world, to tend the world, yeah. right? We're supposed to rule over the beasts of the field and the birds of the air and the fish, and we're supposed to care for the ground. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that we do that is by learning about it. Yes. And the more we learn about it, the more we can tend it better if we have a mind that is yeah. inspired and guided by the Holy Spirit. The amazing thing to me about the whole uh, this whole question about did dinosaurs have feathers is um, it's not that it's like God can't do God can do whatever He wants. It's just the creativity of God, mm -hmm. the fact that how creative, how awesome is our Creator that these things that you normally wouldn't think would have feathers, but when you look at the data, you have to follow the data wherever it leads. And it seems to be pretty clear that dinosaurs, some species, had feathers. Yeah. And so uh, I guess just to wrap it up, just a real quick second here. Um, so if you, we, of course, believe that God created all things, the idea that, bur or that dinosaurs had feathers in no way questions that God created dinosaurs That's or right. birds. Yeah. You know, one of the things that sometimes we get a little hung up on is, you know, if an evolutionist makes an argument mm -hmm. and they're right about something, we worry that then they're right about everything else. Right. And sure, the evolutionary argument that birds evolved from dinosaurs requires there to be continuity and it requires there to be, at some point, feathers evolve, whether mm -hmm. it's with birds themselves or before that sure. or what. So sooner or later, the evolutionary community was saying, we're going to predict that we should find some feathers among these animals. But that prediction, even though it's based in an evolutionary concept, is just a prediction. And sure. it could be yes and it could be no. And yes. there's nothing about the source of their idea that um, mandates that mm -hmm. you know, a young yeah. earth creationist couldn't say, well, yeah. it's entirely possible that the animals that are most similar to birds exactly. that seem to be designed in similar ways could also have additional similarities that to this point we don't you know we hadn't seen exactly. it. and you know if you talk to me as a as a grad student when this stuff started coming out I was pretty skeptical about it it just it wasn't convincing mm -hmm. me and the data wasn't all that great but as the data got better I realized okay well that's the data mm -hmm. how do we interpret those data well we might interpret those in different ways sure. and certainly we do between a creationist and an evolutionary uh, perspective um, but the idea that God created different kinds of dinosaurs and different kinds of birds. When I look at Archaeopteryx, it looks to me a bit like a little feathered raptor because it actually mm -hmm. shares a lot of features with those other raptors that now have feathers. That might be a kind of its own. Mm -hmm. You know, this raptorial dino type of thing. Mm -hmm. Archaeopteryx isn't the first bird. Yep. Because, you know, in, in an old earth or an evolutionary perspective, maybe it is. But thinking from a biblical creation perspective, God created the birds, the oaf, the birds and stuff on, di on the fifth day. There's a whole bunch of first birds. They mm -hmm. showed up at once. Mm -hmm. And it's only when we adopt an ancient age of the earth that we start saying, you know, well, who might be the first around here? Mm -hmm. Archaeopteryx is part of a kind. That kind has some things in it that we call dinosaurs. And other kinds have things that we call birds yeah. or other sorts of dinosaurs. Yeah. And all of that, I think, is consistent. And, you know, there's been some good work done by creationist paleontologist uh, Matt McLean uh, and uh, a couple of co-authors had a great paper on dinosaurs and birds and feathers that was published um, in the International Conference on Creationism in 2018. Uh, I was on an earlier paper in the same, um, in the same conference in 2013. 
And, uh, you know, those of us in creation paleontology, and there's a good number of us now, most of us are entirely comfortable with the idea that birds mm -hmm. and dinosaurs shared feathers as a character, as a physical thing that uh, they had in common, much in the same way that you and I both have certain bones mm -hmm. that other animals have, yep. even though we're not related to them. Exactly. It's part of the design plan that God used when he was sure. creating a world. God made a world that runs on gravity, that runs on a certain size planet with a certain atmosphere, yeah. a certain type of sun giving us certain types of light. Mm -hmm. All of those things are gonna create a series of constraints on how God is then going to build his creatures. Yeah. Because if we can't work on this planet, but we could work on Venus, well, mm, mm -hmm. it's not gonna be the same. Yeah. So God is free to make all sorts of things, but he's also wise enough to know what sorts of things are gonna work where. Exactly. Well, Dr. Ross, thank you so much Absolutely. for that great answer. And so. Uh, how can people, uh, do you have a website that you... Well, uh, I'm with Cornerstone Educational Supply. My wife likes to say, we're the stuff people. <laughs> when your science curriculum says, go get some things to do experiments, we have the stuff for that. It's a place to go. And you can find us on the web at cornerstone-edsupply.com. And uh, hop on, take a look around, uh, sign up for our newsletter. Every once in a while, I throw out a little sciencey tidbit in our uh, emails. You can find us on Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash cornerstone.ed. And uh, we might throw up a little stuff here and there on that. And if you got any questions, shoot us an email. We'd love to talk to you and, and hear your thoughts and your ideas. Thank you again. And uh, thank you guys. I know this is not archaeology, but uh, the, the question, I know he and I both get questions because I'm an archaeologist. He's a paleontologist. And so we probably get questions. You get archaeological questions.